Oh, I like this. In this video I want to show you how you can create some electric piano sound with Operator in Ableton Live. And I mean, of course there are tons of plugins emulating directly some electric pianos like Rhodes plugins or Wurlitzer plugins and they are fun. But I just want to show you how fun it is to actually create those types of sounds yourself because you can do it with just a couple of moves, it's really easy. And then there's also a lot of space for creativity and your individual take on it. And before we start, let me quickly say hi, my name is Janis and on my channel you can find videos about music production and performance. And in case you'll enjoy this video, you're already warmly invited to later drop by my channel and check out some more videos, for example, about sound design in Ableton Live. So first you need to select this routing and operator where you hear A and C and those two get modulated by B and D and it's like this full square that you can see here. And what this means is that the oscillators we hear are A and C. And for example, when an A is the only one that is selected right now, it has this kind of simple envelope, nothing special, reacting a bit to the velocity, that if we add a second oscillator that modulates A, because here you can see it's happening in this routing, we get some nice tonal color, which really sounds like this electric piano type thing that just opens a little the sound a little brighter, which is really cool and which you can do by just adding a simple envelope that also stays higher because otherwise the, the sustain is lower. We just get those initial hits. And like this we kind of keep the timbre and you can fine tune it to wherever you like it. But that's so great about Operator that it's very visual and you can also play with the chorus because it gives so many interesting tones. Sounds a bit like in some elevator. It really quickly becomes metallic. Which is kind of cool. I mean, again, I just want to show you how many different sounds you have. And this is just the first oscillator. I mean, here it's in some simple setting. And the second oscillator I just used for creating some additional tones and would in this case some type of metallic tone as you can hear. And you can get it by playing a bit with the chorus because here you get different types of harmonics and you hear that those high harmonics are not necessarily so definable in terms of tuning, but they bring in this live from also some, I mean, it's not a real instrument here, but that just make the sound a bit more lively and a little more open than just a bunch of sine waves. And by the way, we're using sine waves everywhere here and no feedback. They just react a bit to the velocity. And yeah, especially when it comes to those metallic sounds, it's very fun to play around. Also the fine tuning. basically changes those harmonics, which is fun. And you can also change the chorus on the C oscillator, which brings very interesting timbres. It makes the sound very bright. Interesting. And also you see the envelope here is a little slower, so it merges in a little, but this way you get timbres that are also very good. Oh, I like this. so fun and I mean you can do this forever and always find new timbres. Also what I like a lot is that you can visually adjust all those envelopes. You can copy them if you right click here and copy them from whatever. But I like to maybe do it but change a little bit the individual things so they are not all exactly the same because that's something I always avoid that everything is exactly the same. I always try to bring in small changes because especially with software instruments, I feel like it's just my opinion. It's cool to add those little tweaks to make them sound a little more unique, personal and to break a little the stiffness of things. What's very important is that the modulation oscillators, so D and B, react to the velocity. That means 
that it's not louder, but they modulate C or A more, which just brightens your playing. So if I play like this, there's not so much modulation as if I play like this. And also I like this a lot because I never like if it's only velocity responsive. I mean, it has to be velocity responsive, but not too much. And the dynamics have also, or the dynamics should also come from the filter response. But here, I mean, the filter is selected, but it's completely open and no envelope applied. So we can also perfectly deselect it and there's no change in sound because we do all the shaping with those modulations. So you kind of emulate a filter response with the modulation amount. And also here you can edit, you see I also edited it under the modulations here, like volume B uh, is affected by velocity, volume D, actually a lot, but still it feels cool. And also the keyboard tracking. So for example, if I play a lower note and a higher note, you see, although I played them with the same velocity, the higher note was reacting more because there's keyboard tracking applied and the same, it's the same like filter keyboard tracking at other synthesizers, for example, like a classical subtractive synthesizer. But here you can do it the same way with just how much the sound gets modulated. And it's also a way of just opening up your sound a little. And that was it for this video. I feel a bit weird because it was so short. My sound design tutorials usually take a bit more time, but nevertheless, I hope it was interesting and you feel like trying this out for yourself. And if I didn't mention something or just didn't explain myself properly, just don't hesitate to drop any questions in the comments. If you're interested in more sound design tutorials in Ableton Live with all of the three synthesizers, I'm going to link a playlist here that you're warmly invited to watch. Also, you're warmly invited to subscribe to this channel. And apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.